Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, today I've got just a short mini lecture in epistemological framework for you, something that I think will help clarify the difference between uh, pre-modern and modernist frameworks, because uh, I think that's something that a lot of people sort of struggle with understanding. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, what would you say if I told you that I could toss this heavy backhoe tire high into the air just by thinking about it? I'm guessing that most of you would be skeptical, so let me give you a demonstration. Now, at this point, most of you are probably saying, wait a minute, you didn't toss the tire into the air just by thinking about it. You put a charge of tannerite under it, and then you shot the tannerite, and the explosion is what propelled the tire into the air. Well, let's take a closer look at the chain of events that led to that explosion. You know, we know the tire was tossed into the air by the explosion of a charge of tannerite. Why did that explosive go off? Well, because it was struck by a bullet. Why did that bullet strike the Tannerite? Well, that bullet was propelled downrange by the combustion of a charge of smokeless powder. Why did that smokeless powder go off? Well, it was initiated by the detonation of a primer in a 223 cartridge. Why did that primer go off? Well, because it was struck by a firing pin in my AR-15 here. Why did the firing pin strike the primer? Because it was hit by a hammer, also inside of the AR-15 here. Uh, why was the hammer released under spring tension to strike the firing pin? Because my finger pulled the trigger. Why did my finger pull the trigger? Well, because muscles in my arm that are connected to my finger through tendons and such uh, contracted. Why did those muscles contract? Well, because of a neural impulse that traveled down the nerves in my arm from my brain. Why did that neural impulse originate in my brain? Because I thought about it. So, through this long chain of cause and effect, it really was my action of thinking about it that ultimately caused the tire to be tossed into the air. And this proves very illustrative for distinguishing between the pre-modernist and modernist uh, views. Now, maybe I should back up a little bit. I mean, depending on what field you're studying, uh, you may use the terms modernist, pre-modernist, post-modernist differently. Um, I, I think they use those for various movements in like art history and literature. I'm not really sure how they use them in those fields, but in philosophy, uh, we use those terms to refer to three distinctly different mindsets or, you know, sort of frameworks for viewing reality. Uh, and most people find the distinction between modernism and postmodernism pretty easy to grasp. I mean, you know, the, the modernist sees uh, reality as objective, truth as absolute, uh, morality usually as objective, uh, whereas the postmodernist sees everything as relative. You know, they don't believe in objective morality. They don't believe in objective reality. Uh, they certainly don't believe in absolute truth or anything that would be absolute uh, outside of their own mind. So that distinction is pretty easy to uh, understand or pretty easy to distinguish between those two. The difference between modernism and pre-modernism is a lot more subtle because the modernist and the pre-modernist both believe in objective reality, both believe in absolute truth in some form, both generally believe in objective morality. The real difference, though, comes in how they view cause and effect. The modernist tends to focus on immediate and intermediate causes. You know, why did the tire get tossed into the air? 
because the Tannerite exploded. Uh, you know, they acknowledge that chain of cause and effect, and you know, they may sometimes follow it all the way back to an ultimate cause. Um, they don't deny the existence of ultimate causes, but it's really the intermediate causes that they tend to focus on uh, when thinking about reality. The pre-modernist doesn't really care about intermediate causes. Uh, you know, they see things in terms of ultimate causes. So, to the pre-modernist, why did the tire go up in the air? Because I made it do that. How did I make it do that? What tools I may have used is immaterial. Now, we've established that the tire went up in the air because I made it do that through a chain of cause and effect, but why did it come back down? To the modernist, it came back down because of the action of gravity, and gravity is the result of the mass of the Earth, and we could go off on a long physics lecture about how gravity operates. To the pre-modernist, well, I made the tire go up in the air, but I didn't do anything to make it come back down, so there must be some other ultimate cause in effect here to make it come back down. And since they can't identify that as a human, they would identify it as God, or a God, depending on whether your pre-modernist is a monotheist or a polytheist. You know, I, I didn't think you could have an atheist pre-modernist uh, until back during the uh, Hurricane Katrina incident. I remember some people on the news saying how these hurricanes were the result of the president's environmental policy. So uh, m maybe an atheist pre-modernist would say that it came back down because of the will of the government, but <laughs> uh, do with that as you will. And just as they view cause and effect differently, um, so too there's a, a similar or an analogous difference in how the modernist and the pre-modernist view data collection, you know, view their ability to learn about reality. Once again, the modernist focuses very much on the methods of data collection, the immediate causes by which data is collected. Uh, and so they're very focused on how things like, you know, instrumentation errors can introduce errors in your measurement and how uh, your measurement thus will not be perfectly accurate. It will not be an absolute representation of reality. And that's where the modernists tend to get the, the view or the reputation for believing in reality being objective, but the absolute of objective reality not exactly being knowable. You, know, you can get close, you can keep getting closer as you drive your instrumentation error lower and lower, but you can't ever quite get there. Pre-modernists, because they don't really look at those intermediate causes, once again, don't really care about instrumentation error, uh, and because they think about it in terms of ultimate causes, will view the world in a much more absolute and usually a much more theistic sense. So I hope this helps to clarify this issue a little bit for anyone who may have been struggling with it. Um, until next time, thanks for watching The Idahoan Show.